Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I'm from IGS Electronics and today we're going to be diving into Schneider Electric's Modicon TM22. Is it TM? Yeah, sorry, it's not TM. Yeah, it's TM221 controller. It's the Schneider Electric's version uh, of entry level PLC, which which is which by the way is quite a good PLC and it comes with a free software for the basic version which is very good if you are starting in the PLCs and for the price you pay for that controller and what the controller comes with it and uh, what you can learn with it it is very good so uh, definitely definitely if you're starting in as a, as a, as a, in, 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 a, in a PLC world Schneider is a good way to start because basically controller comes with free software so that software can be downloaded from uh, Schneider itself I will lift, uh, have left the link in the description below and it comes in three forms it's a basic it's a standard and then it's an expert version obviously as you progress higher into higher more advanced PLCs obviously you're gonna have to start pay for it because no, it takes a lot of money to build those software. So yes, yeah, so it's software is free for this guy. So we're going to be checking out today's the configuration, the, the software itself. Definitely going to talk you through all the necessary wiring for this place. Where this is the basic of the basicest controllers, like entry level, and there's obviously more advanced controllers within this family. So uh, I'll talk that out in a little bit in a in a, in a video as well. So uh, so yeah, that's what we've been doing today. I was I was quite keen for a while to stuck into Modicon to see what Schneider's got in offer and uh, how they do things and i'm actually so far enjoying it it's a, it's, it's, it's a good controller it comes with the solid foundations and and i think for a lot of people that's exactly what they need so yes yeah, so yeah that's what we do today so don't forget all the links everything else i do believe can benefit in possible ways in the description below without further ado let's get started <music> Yeah, so first let's have a look at the controller itself because there's a couple of things I want to run through you as well So uh, this in here is going to be your uh, inputs and uh, in here is going to be outputs This particular controller we are going to be working is going to be our transistor controller So basically it's going to be outputting only 24 volt DC Once the inputs are powered in here you can have add a additional cards as you can see in sales, it says in here, it is ESD sensitivity. So do make sure you don't plunk anything on there unless the PLC is powered down. If it is powered, you stand a quite a high chance that you will mess this up. So basically burn this thing out and uh, this part of the controller will no longer will be able to be used because it's just not going to work anymore. So do make sure if you use it, make sure you uh, uh, turn off the controller. So we have a serial port RJ45 RS4, uh, RJ45 RS485. I think I said it right. So uh, as for the serial, we're going to be checking that out. We're going to be adding a HMI in the future. We also have a uh, run and stop signal and also a standard SD card for it. We're going to be checking that out as well in the future videos. And obviously in here, as you can see in here, is our USB communication support. A standard USB will do. So and uh, we have a uh, power goes right in there which is 24 volt dc my particular controller is 24 volt dc right in here again it's another slot in there where you can add additional cards which we by the way are going to add right now as well because that's what we're going to be using in a future just plug onto it as you can see the color is white this mini cannot be used with the controller because this is the newer controller and uh, this is the older controller so uh, the older 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 control doesn't really, but the whole thing is still the same just changing the color so I don't know why now they decide to change the color and things like that but it is what it is and right in here if I can somehow open it with my oh, screwdriver it's very interestingly uh, Schneider has had analog inputs so uh, you have a two of them a zero one and uh, zero and one so when it comes to the little uh, thingy when you purchase it should come within the box so that's where you be you're going to be checking that out as well in the future videos and i uh, don't forget the one last thing before I, before we crack on with the wiring so you have a battery in there as well that comes separate in a small little bag so make sure my camera is still zoomed in on what we're trying to talk about in here so uh don't forget to put that in once you start using the controller so and that 
pretty much it's all this is their smallest control obviously they get bigger and things like that so but it's going to be enough for us to a crack on from the very very beginning so yeah that's pretty much all that we need to know let's crack on with the actual explaining the wiring of ios all right so when it comes down to powering your ios so uh, we're going to start with inputs and as you can see down here i have nc nc that means not connected so basically just those, those two are just there the purely the reason they are there because different model uh controllers can have a, a 24 volt dc output in here so you can power your inputs if you wish to obviously uh, that a uh, bit more expensive module this is a very cheap cheaper the first entry level module so it doesn't have uh, this option in here but if you see that option here use that as your power supply to power your inputs to power your inputs as you can see we've got one com in here com in general if you look at the inputs as itself look at them as uh, if you're an electrician or whatever so look at them as a lamps they both need the lamps need plus and a minus to operate and that's exactly how the inputs work they come in here if you send in a negative which you should insist a negative from the power supply which i'm using two power supply one for inputs one for the outputs i call them a uh, t and an s so my uh, uh input power supply is sending a minus to the com and that com is literally sending a minus to all the inputs in here so and then for all you need to do from that power supply, send the 24 where you want to send it. You can go to your sensors, you can go to switches like mine, right there. As you can see, where these guys in here. It comes uh, my 24 volt comes in here, powers uh, sends the power to all my switches, and then after that, it sends the power out as you switch. As you click the switch, that 24 volt will go back to the input right here and activate the lamp. As you can see, lamp is flashing. Also, you can see my two of my uh, inputs are constantly on because my lamps, these lamp, these uh, sensor lamps in here for my training belt are uh, normally closed. So they are constantly being closed. That's why you see them on at all times. When it comes down to outputs, my controller specifically, it is a transistor output. So it even says now TR outsource. So transistors uh, for transistor wiring, what we're doing here, transistor wire, we need to power at the actual block that is outputting at the 24 volt DC. So as you can see down there, it says plus and minus. So I guess we send in plus and minus from my output a uh, power supply. You don't have to do the way I do it. It's just, I like separating my inputs away from the outputs just to keep them nice and clean. So not to interfere with each other. So uh, use that a plus and a minus is powering transistors and as output will close, it will literally output uh, as one of these lamps in here will close off. It will send out 24 volt to wherever it needs to go, wherever you send it. In my case, let me zoom out. Oh, not zoom out, not zoom in. It's sending it to this board and it's basically that 24 volt is activating the belt to run forwards or run backwards. And I also need to make sure if I'm using this guy's 24 volt, uh, I want to make sure that the outputs here as well is going to be receiving the same negative because it's going to be sending plus out there. They will receive the same negative from the same power supply that one I'm sending here as well. So do make, hopefully that makes sense. So you have to keep the power supplies all together through whatever you're using it for. So if you're using 24 volt DC in here and you're using this output to uh, power that those, uh, those inputs there, make sure those inputs receive the same negative. So, uh, and that... It comes down to wiring. This guy in here is a different uh, ball game. We're going to be talking about in the future. There's quite a lot to talk about this, so uh, there's a lot to go through it. But for now, that will do. And also, you have a 24 volt DC supply in here. As you can see, I didn't put earth in it. Very naughty. You should be always putting earth into it. For me, for trader testing purposes, that will do. So now let's jump onto the laptop and check out how to get ourselves going into the software. So for us to be able to program uh, this particular controller, we, the actual software for this particular controller, which is the family of Modicon M221, it's free and it's called EcoStructure Machine Expert Basic. And that can be downloaded from a Schneider or website directly. I have left the link in the description below, so definitely click it and it will take you to this window. And if you want to check out what is uh, which controllers are covered by uh, this uh, particular software, there's three of them. One then is a standard option, which is about 400 quid depending where you are in the world for here in the uk is about 400 and then is a uh, expert as well so uh, which is obviously quite a lot more so this is pretty much all this is all these controllers in here these are pretty much all of them there is part number starting with m221 or i think it's called basically m221 family so yeah so uh 
this software in particular, it is a free of charge. So download it. Once you download it, it will give you a uh, Echo Structure Machine Expert basic in there. So load it up. And the first window is going to open up is this guy in here. If you start him for the first time, it'll be good to go through all this in here. So from there on, it's going to be asking you to a uh, protect your application. We don't want any of this for us. If you want to protect it, it's quite straightforward. Apply to it. And that's it. So from there on, we go into configuration. In configuration, we pretty much are going to set up our uh, controller itself. What is part of the controller? All the controller itself, the add-ons, and so on. So our controller is this guy in here, TM221C16. Double check. Yeah, that's the one. Just click and drag. There you go. Prompt you to change it. Yes, we do. So uh, let me do that. So from there on, we also want to add the uh, uh unlock card we had in there my one is a tm2 family tm2 and tm3 they're pretty much the same it's just the next level up so uh what we're gonna do in here is we need mm3hd that's those part numbers are on your controllers and a card so you can easily just check it so let's drag that in there as well and that's pretty much my setup so that's pretty much we are done when it comes down to configurations and all this we're going to be checking out as we progress with videos in the future from there on let's jump on to the programming so where we can actually start creating our first program again the program is quite a big subject we're not going to be doing too much about it but to get ourselves into the gist of it how it works it works in form of ranks, like for Siemens would be networks, for, 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 for a Schneider is in ranks. So uh, as you can see, it shows a little X in there, it says the rank is not being completed, there's errors and things like that. So if it's okay with the rank, it will always show like a green tick in there. So if you want to add the rank, just click uh, the add, and then there's uh, obviously uh, other, other, uh, remove it, add it, and so on. So we, know, we don't need it, so we're going to delete that. So from there on to start programming, as you can see in here, we have a contact in here, normally open, normally close and so on. Again, we're not going to go too much about it, but to get ourselves into basics, to get us going, what we're going to do in here, most of the time, you're going to have this window open, which is where all your tools is required for your project. So we're going to go into IO objects and let's name up some of the digital inputs. So in the symbols in here, in a... Yeah, remember choice is continue, that's fine. So uh, from there on, let's say this is gonna be our start. It's probably gonna want underscore, yes. So uh, then we're gonna do a uh, stop underscore, why not? And from there on, uh, that's done. So once you, uh, to pretty much you can name up all your IOs. It's really good to name up your IOs, guys. If you uh, to, just to keep an eye on, and obviously you can do the comments in here if you want as well. So we're gonna apply it. Thank you. And also we can do that to digital outputs as well for this uh, video. So we're gonna call that a uh, let's say belt oh, underscore run. That will do for that. So. And that's for this particular video, it will be just fine. So what we're gonna do is create is a basic latch. So to start adding contacts, just go into the contacts, click on it and add, click on again, add. We want normally closed in here. And for the coil, it's gonna be this guy in here. So this line in here, if you wanna join this line in here, just grab a little pencil in here and just basically pencil it. It's great, if you wanna delete it, click a delete quite straightforward and uh, from there on let's address it so click on the address double click it so it's going to be a percentage in here so uh, IOs the so inputs are at under I the, uh, the discrete inputs are under I and discrete outputs are under Q and internal bits are under M so uh, by clicking I it will show you that all the options available we're going to go a zero as you can see start popped up as well because uh, we already named it so and then uh address in here for the latch is going to be our q for the output and as you can see that's going to come up it's about run as well so our stop button is going to be here is going to be our i which is going to be our zero one and also we obviously need to name a coil which is q zero and here we go our first basic program 
is good. As you can see, our rank detector, error detector is happy. So we are pretty much ready to load that into our controller. So let's go to, uh, there's a display in here. We're going to be checking that out in the future. It's a pretty cool addition to uh, the, the not on the other, other manufacturers don't have it. I think it's pretty cool. We're going to be checking that out in the future, but we go straight into commissioning. When you are in a commissioning, if your USB is plugged in, every now and then, I don't know why, it's glitchy. Don't ask me why it is glitchy. And uh, when you, you try and log it in, it says, I can't see it. Just unplug your USB and plug it back in. And usually it fixes that problem. So click on that and we're going to be clicking log in. So once your USB is plugged in, you should be seeing that straight on M221, provided you are communicating with USB. Some people maybe do it via the serial. I don't know. So uh, and as you can see, all went uh, successful, so we are happy. So from there on, as you can see, it's giving you options. So uh, PC to controller, which is download, or uh, controller to PC, which will be the upload. You can choose one or the other. So if you want a, a if you want to uh, send it in or take, take the program out, this is basic upload and download. So if the you have a program and they all match, which you can show that in the minute. So we're going to send PC to controller. So uh, there we go. That went in very quickly. So there we go. So now we just basically is telling you the PC and controller applications are identical and it will gray out. You're no longer able to do that because they are identical. Why would you? So and also in if your firmware of your controller is out of date, you're the uh, Schneider, which is very good at what they do and how they do it. It will prompt you to update that uh, firmware before you do anything. So uh, let him do what he what he's trying to do. So uh, as you can see here, you update the controller and so on. So as you can see, my controller is up to date. It's not going to be a, uh, doing anything and so on. This is these are the things we probably most likely going to be checking out in the future. So once we've done that, if we go into the programming, as you can see from here on, you can actually interact with discrete inputs and outputs from Schneider, from uh, Machine Expert Basic. Not many softwares allowed to do that. I worked with Mitsubishi, they're not allowed to do that. Siemens does not allow to do that. At least didn't allow to do me. Schneider allows to do it. Awesome. Very interesting. So uh, from there on, you, you can go on to it. It says in here is F0 and F1. And also says false. Be careful when you do play with these. Okay, so let's say we're going to click that one. As you can see, my belt is uh, running now. Uh, I'm not sure. You can, can you see that in the camera? Yeah, you should be able to see that in the camera. So, and then I can go in F, F um, off it. So, and then I click F1 uh, in there, which is uh, true now. So basically, just basically click the stop button. As you can see, now it says F on there. Be careful, because if you go down into the program and try to click your buttons, your buttons will not be responding because that F is down there. So we need to uh, get rid of it. You see, by clicking F0 again, you will remove those Fs. Make sure those Fs are off when you are logging out. So otherwise, you will have problems. So do make sure that's the case. You can also, as you can see in here, you can also uh, do that on output, which is cool. <laughs> it's just it's just something something very interesting, something really uh, fascinates me sometimes when I see something new. So and there we go. That's our first program. Let's jump on to a. Uh, obviously, there's quite a lot more to cover, and there's a lot more I definitely want to check out, and I'll definitely bring you guys along to show what is what. So uh, so yeah. So let's jump onto a uh, an, on a control and have a look how that works. So let's just zoom a little bit, a little bit in. So by clicking the start button in here, so you can see the lamp comes on, conveyor runs, very simple program, and we by clicking the stop at it it stops. Yeah, very simple. And that, ladies and gentlemen, will do for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, don't forget to smash that like. It definitely helps out the channel. And uh, yeah, and do subscribe if you're new to the channel and if you like what we're doing here. So we're definitely be progressing with this Snyder controller. I, 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 I like it and I do want to explore it. So uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.